everybody and welcome to this week's show of Can Stuff Sport presented by Grace Brooker and Melanie Puckett. On tonight's agenda we talk to the man behind We Are Canterbury, George Berry, and get the inside scoop on community sport and his predictions for the Can Stuff Metro competition. But firstly let's review the big matchups from the weekend. We hear from Canterbury's FPC most promising player Amy Rule after their 18-12 loss against UC. And then followed by the captain of the UC Viperettes, Sophie Anderson. Hey guys, I'm joined here by Amy Rule. She's prop for the U's and a uh, good battle out there today, but unfortunately going down to UC. How was the battle up front? Um, it was pretty tough today. I've got to give UC a credit. They gave it their all and it was 80 minutes of rugby. Probably didn't help. The conditions were a bit rough today, but we love to get a bit down and dirty, is the classic saying of mine. Um, but good all around. Good. Yeah, it was a good battle out there. Definitely heated battles and we, see, we saw a few tussles out there. What was the mood going into this game? Um, as a Lincoln team, we're so lucky that we've got such a positive attitude and we're just there to give it our all and whatever happens on the field stays on the field. Nice. No meat pies for you today, but I'm sure there'll be plenty on offer at the club rooms tonight. <laughs> How important was that first dot down by Ash Ward? Oh, it was just incredible, you know, that first dot down, the first like few minutes and your whole team, it's a whole team try and you're all excited and that drilling kicks in and just you carry on for the full 80, it's great. Well, unlucky on the loss today. Good luck <laughs> for the rest of the season, you can go have a shout. Thanks man. All right. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm joined here with Captain of Varsity Sophie Anderson after winning the game 18-12. Uh, so Sophie, tough conditions here today. What were the messages coming out of the change room and how important was it to hold on to the ball? Yeah, it was a bit wet out there and underfoot, it's a bit slippery, but yeah, it was just really important to hold on to their ball today. There were going to be drop balls, so it was just important not to get a heads down about it and just play a, play a tighter game. Half time, five all score. What messages were you giving the girls? Yeah, that first half our line speed wasn't very good, we didn't put much pressure on, so that was a really important message to get out to the girls in the second half, on which that first 20 coming out of that we really put the pressure on and, and made them you know, make them mistakes that we capitalised on, so it was yeah, good. Bit of a shift in momentum after that second try, you've got the calibre of Kendra Coxedge, was it straight to post or what was your thinking behind the three points on offer? Um, yeah, the three three on offer, you kind of got to take it. We're only up, well, what was it, 5 all. So you want to get the three points and then, you know, make them work for something. So they had to score to, to get ahead. So I think that mentally is a little bit of, bit of a pressure on. So, yeah, it was good to take three. It was a good game and good luck for the rest of the season. Thanks very much. Sign Bye. off. Playing great. We also got along to a one-sided affair at Linfield Park as Christchurch demolished Linwood in the Tauranga match going down 63-11. to 11. After the match we spoke to Linwood's captain Tapasu Thomas and also Dan Dorgan playing his 50th game from Christchurch. Hey guys, joined here with Dan Dorgan, first five for Christchurch. Pretty good game out there today, good performance from the boys, good free flowing rugby. What do you put that down to? Um, everyone sort of gets up for this crying towel match, everyone always circles the date when the draw comes out at the start of the season, looks forward to it. Um, we're lucky that we've had sort of four or five weeks to build into this and, and take a lot of learnings from our previous weeks and um, yeah, it's a game everyone looks forward to and, and loves getting out in the park. And a try before and after half time, how did that change the momentum of the game? Yeah, it sort of gets the boys up um, when you can dot down just on half time and just after it, it sort of keeps that momentum going after having that 10 minute break um, and you know the boys went well and, and yeah, it puts a wind in the sails when, when it happens. And it's your 50th cap today, 9 from 9 and kicking, <laughs> obviously you've got to be happy with today's game and a lot of people you probably want to thank over your career at Christchurch. Yeah it's been a, it's, um, been a few years, it's taken a lot longer than most people, I think I worked it out that if I didn't have any injuries it would be about the 92nd game today so. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good um, haul. But no, I'm pretty, pretty happy to get to um, 50 games and yeah, look, to, look forward to enjoying with a few people tonight. Yeah, well, go have a shower and enjoy the beers tonight. Yes, thank, thank you. Much. So I'm joined here today with Linwood's captain, Tapasu Thomas. So a tough match out there. Unfortunately, going down to Christchurch. How's the body feeling after a big clash like that? Uh, it's not too bad. I, I picked up an injury early in that first half and then it happened to come off. Had to come off. Oh, picked up an injury in that first start of the first half and tried to play it out and I ended up coming off at half time. It just wasn't really feeling too good. So besides that, not too bad. You had quite a bit of territory in that second half but failed to execute and get points on the board. What do you put that down to? Yeah, uh, we've we done well to come out of that out of half time and put a lot of pressure on but then just the basic skills, I think it would have, what it came down to. Our basic skills let us down again. So it's just something we want to keep working on. 
And another big game next week against Old Boys. How do you come out of this game and prepare for next week? Um, I would kind of just look at our look at what we're trying to do and what we're trying to achieve. We don't really look too far into other teams and how they're going. We just kind of just we just focus on ourselves and we just look at what we can learn from this game and take the positives and we just move from there. Awesome. Well, good luck for the rest of the season. Thank Thanks you. for chatting. Nice. After live streaming the Tail Ringer match in the weekend, George Berry had a lot to say about the performances of both teams. Let's hear what he has to say about his involvement in community sport and a review of the game. Hi guys, just want to welcome George Berry here to the studio, the creator of We Are Canterbury. Awesome to have you here. You've had such a huge involvement in club sport around Canterbury, obviously. Um, so what inspired you to create We Are Canterbury? Well, I guess for us, uh, it was a, just a, a case of a lack of people doing it, really. We could see a, a big demise in uh, local media from other mainstream media outlets and club rugby and club football and netball just wasn't getting the coverage that we, we thought it could. I used to be the main sports reporter for One News in the South Island and if I went to Queenstown for the day, I couldn't do a Christchurch story. If I went to Nelson, we couldn't do a Christchurch story and it, it just showed as sort of uh, over the years that things were getting less and less from a local perspective and you know sports played a massive part of my life and I just thought that you know we need to keep it going and uh, we got together with Canterbury Rugby, cricket, hockey, basketball, football and, and they were screaming up for it so yeah that was basically the genesis of, uh, of We Are Canterbury. And it's obviously huge importance of club rugby in the community, was that one of the points that you were offering as well? Yeah, definitely from a, from a club perspective, it's, it's really important. We think uh, the Crusaders get plenty of coverage at times, the Tactics all get theirs, the Canterbury Rams do, and while we work with all of them, um, club rugby was, uh, and, well, club sport in general was one of the things that was starting to dismin uh, diminish quite a lot, and we just, we have a real feeling that club sport is part of the community, it creates who we are, we think it's great for mental health, that people are out not only uh, getting fit, uh, well, I'm not really fit myself, but um, that kind of commune that you have with your teammates, whether it be on a Tuesday or Thursday night, or whether it's on a Saturday afternoon after rugby or, or, or whatever your sport is, it's actually really healthy to get out of the house and go and see some mates, and if you're feeling down, you know, chances are you an opportunity to chat or, you know, have a, have a shandy. Um, yeah, we just think that the community sport is super important. Well, that's enough on rugby chat, I think. We've got our uh, top hot fire questions for you. Ooh, tricky ones. So, yeah, from the rules, uh, whoever comes into the studio, we get you to do the top 10. And uh, for this week, it's just a bit of general knowledge, uh, sport-wise. So you've got a minute, and if you can't answer one, just say pass. And if we've got time, we'll come back to it at the end. So make sure to get our timer ready. Okay, first question. What was the score of the Pulse Tactics game on Sunday? 33-32. Uh, nice, yep. Who did the Canterbury Rams play on Saturday? Uh, they lost to Giants. Yes, Nelson Giants. Yep. Okay, two from two. How many points are the Coastal Spirit men's team sitting on? Oh, gee, oh, oh. Take a guess. Are they going good? Yeah, they're going, they're going oh, pretty mate, good. They'll be, up, they'll be on, what have we had, about five, six games so far, three, maybe they on 15 or 16 plus? Yeah, 15. Right, who's sitting at the top of the table in the Canterbury, Cairnstaff women's rugby grade? Oh, Christchurch. Christchurch, unfortunately. Uh, right, what sport is Scott Dixon involved in? Uh, he's in uh, motorsport, what is it, um, the particular car? Motorsport. We'll go it's with racing. racing, there we go. Yeah. Who will play the, who will the tactics play tonight? Yeah, played a pulse the other night, so it must be the Stars, maybe? The Steel. Mm. What sport do the Canterbury Red Devils play? Oh, that's ice hockey. Nice. And who scored the first try for the Warriors against the Sharks? Tough one, that one. Oh, did they score any tries? I think this game they might Actually, have got. Mate, I'm not, even answer, got I'm not even going to answer the question because right. I'm a Bunnies fan. Oh. Go South Sydney every day of the week. All right, number nine, who is the coach of the Silver Ferns? Uh, Nolan Toto. Or Dame, Dame Nolan told her. Oh, Dame, that's extra points. And last question, what's your prediction for the Cairnstaff women's grade this year? I think Christchurch are unstoppable at the moment. I mean, the, the, the good part about that is, is and I guess disappointing that teams like Mariston, they haven't been able to get a team ready, but to see you know, what Breezy and that's doing with the, with the, the girls or the ladies, they're 23, 24 turning up to a training is, you know, unbelievable, lots of people to pick from, yeah, they've got lots of depth. It'd be nice to see that spread mm. right across the competition in coming years, but 
uh, yeah, I just can't get over how strong women's rugby is and, and good to watch. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Good skill. All right, well, I think you did pretty good on those 10 questions. Maybe one wrong, probably better than Kendra and Tori last week. Yeah, don't, don't ask me <laughs> Warriors questions. I talk rugby league, just not the Warriors. Oh. What do you say? Never bet on the Warriors and never bet against the Warriors. <laughs> oh, wow. It's been awesome to have you in the studio and Perfect. best of luck for the future for We Are Canterbury. And yeah, it's great to see you guys getting down to the park. Awesome, thanks for your Sweet. support and uh, go Can Stuff Sport. Sweet, thank you. Do you need great people? Call Can Staff. With our contract staff, you get who you need, when you need them. It's your business with our people. Go to canstaff.co.nz or call 0800 11 2211. Looking forward to this weekend, the Coastal Football Men's Premier Team have a top of the table clash against Kashmir. We spoke to Gary Bennett, the Director of Coastal Football, ahead of the big matchup this weekend. Thanks for joining us here, Gary, who's the Director of Coastal Football. Um, just wanted to know how the men and the women's Premier teams are going this season. Yeah, it's, it's been a good season so far for both teams. Um, our men's team uh, had a really good win last week against Christchurch United to move them into second spot um, with a big game coming up against Kashmir Tech this week. And, uh, and our ladies have, have done really well again this season, uh, top of the league, um, and, and just uh, killing it again this year. Um, we're lucky to have such a, um, such a dominant team at the club, and we have done for many years now. Yeah, it's good to see um, the diversity coming through the club, both men and women having such a strong team. What do you put that down to? It was just, um, it's a good club. We've got a good feel about the club. Um, it goes back a long time. Um, a lot of the girls at the club have been together for sort of 10, 11 years um, and they've gone through, come through the ranks and um, and uh, the previous director of football, uh, Gareth Turnbull, uh, quite a few years ago, you know, he's, he's gone on to um, to coach professionally in, in uh, at New Zealand football and, and the Melbourne victory, uh, put together a, a, a good women's programme and, um, and it's really good to come along and, and just actually carry that on. So um, it's... Uh, it's hard work uh, because uh, you know everybody. Everybody wants to be us, but uh, uh, they're a good bunch. Got a good coach and a good good bunch of players. Yeah, and the men's team spoke about the clash this weekend. So both uh, you and Kashmir are sitting first and second on the table. How important is this game for you guys to take the win? Oh, it's massive for us to keep us in the hunt for the for the title. Uh, they're seven points clear of us. We've actually got to play them three times this week, uh, this uh, this season. Uh, due to the sort of fixture of muddle up really with COVID-19, the games are going, against them are going to come thick and fast. So it's in our own hands. Um, they've got the, the drop on us at the moment in terms of points. Um, but we can't ask for any more than to have the opportunity to, to play them three times to try and um, overtake them in the league. So, um, And on the back of last week, we played ever so well last week and um, had a great victory against Christchurch United. So... Let's just hope the confidence uh, rolls on to Saturday. Oh, very good. And obviously, COVID was a huge impact on many people and many teams. How did it influence your season and how did you guys deal with this? It didn't influence us. On the women's side, um, the season hadn't started before before lockdown. So the women's season has just, just rolled on um, and it's just going to last an extra month. Um, and those guys... Uh, are really going well. I didn't mention the fact that um, there's some outstanding individuals in there as, as well. Um, but uh, it hasn't really uh, affected us in terms of um, our junior and youth football, really, because the seasons hadn't started. Uh, the, the the men's NPL season had already started. We played a couple of games, so there was quite a big break. Um, and to come back in again and, and try and have another pre-season in such a short space of time was quite difficult and um, we found that there was a lot of little niggly injuries where players weren't you know weren't ready it wasn't their fault they weren't ready they just couldn't get together as a group and play football um, <clears throat> so um, we managed to get through those little niggles and um, you know we're looking looking pretty good so it hasn't affected us too much yeah, in terms of developing players in the grades underneath how important is it for those younger people coming through and what is the pathways that you guys have at your club we have a pathway right the way through. Um, you can start playing for, for us at three, four years old in our first kicks program. Um, and then we go into uh, fun football, which is under eights. And then we have start junior teams at nine. Um, and we go right through till 
to 12s as juniors. And then we have our, our youth set up, uh, which uh, we're, we're trying to build on this year and, and make it even better next year. So we can actually produce players from our club that go into these premier sides. Um, you're always going to get players from from other clubs uh, joining. You're always going to get players from our, uh, from our club leaving. That's just the way the way it is. But we try. We're trying our best to uh, build underneath our premier sides, so we get as much local talent through to the to the main teams. Awesome. Well, thanks for taking the time to chat to us today, and good luck for the weekend and the season ahead. Okay. Thanks very much. Check out these other big matchups for the weekend, and get out and about and support some community rugby. Have a safe one from me and Mel Puckett.